Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Murray Beckham. Here are the top five issues you're likely to come up against with any audiovisual software. And if I can make you aware of them, I may save you hours of wasted time and effort. This has nothing to do with PTE AV Studio, and it would be much the same for any other audiovisual software. Now the reason I can easily identify these troublesome areas is because I've fallen into nearly every one of them myself, sometimes more than once if I'm being honest. Number one in my list is not having an organized workflow. Accessing images, video, sound and any other content from many different folders and drives on your computer is a major cause of lost work and hours of frustration. If you work in a methodical way, you'll avoid most, if not all of the audio visual pitfalls you're likely to encounter. The way you achieve this is to work from one dedicated project folder only. Make copies of your images, your video clips, and any sound files like music, commentary and sound effects. Place those copies into the dedicated project folder and work from there only. If you find you need to add more content later, copy that new content into your dedicated project folder first and use them from there. The software doesn't copy images and content automatically when you save a project file. Photoshop and Lightroom users have a very quick and easy way to be able to do this. The option in both software programs is called Collections. With Collections we can click and drag images and video thumbnails from multiple drives and folders and easily copy them to our dedicated project folder. I'll link below to the videos I've made on this subject for both Photoshop and also Lightroom. Number two, not understanding how the audio visual software works. Now this isn't meant as a criticism because you're not likely to know if you're new to the software. But it is something that generates a lot of issues and we see that from questions on audio visual forums. The audio visual process requires us to create two different files and there can be confusion between them. We have a project file and the published show file. The project file saves your work in progress and it's the most vital one of the two. It should be saved in your dedicated project folder. From this file you can always publish your show again but you can't do this from the published show file. You should save your project file regularly as you're working, which is good advice on any computer project. PTE AV Studio will automatically save your project. If you go to the top of the screen and to Settings, Preferences, Project, Auto Recovery, you'll find those settings. The project file tells the software what images, video and sound we've used, along with all of our settings and timings. Now there's no problem in creating as many project files as we want. For example, we could save a different project file at each stage of our creation process. Just add a number to your project name each time and you'll always have a way to return to an earlier version of your show. These project files are tiny, so they're not going to clog up your system. One thing to remember, this project file is useless if it doesn't have the content stored within it that you've kept in your dedicated project folder, hence the need for an organized workflow. 
The second file type is the options we have when we come to publish our show. So once your show is complete and you have previewed your show to your satisfaction within the software program, you're now ready to publish it and you have two main options. An executable file that will only play on a computer. This is going to be necessary if you've created any interactive content. For example, you may have created a manual show where the viewer controls the changing of the images with the mouse or the keyboard. The other publish option is an MP4 video. Now that is practically universal and it will play on PCs, Mac computers, televisions, laptops and it will also be perfect to upload to Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo and other websites. But an MP4 video cannot support any interactive content. Number three is being over ambitious. We see this quite often where a user who is still new and learning the software takes on a very ambitious project. For example, a user may try to include complex animation techniques that may stretch even an experienced user. Or, and this is often a little more common, they include hundreds of images and multiple soundtracks into a huge project. It's a bit like going from 0 to 60 without touching any speeds in between. It can result in frustration and in some cases cost you hours of wasted work and time. We all learn best a little bit at a time. Try making a basic slideshow first and then we can push the creative boundaries a little later. Think of that old saying, if only I knew then what I know now. Number four, underestimating the computer power that we need. Some new users of slideshow software stumble onto this issue particularly when they begin introducing video clips into their presentation. Modern software tends to take advantage of the latest computing power. So if you're using that modern software and you're also using HD video clips, high resolution still images, but you're working on a seven to 10 year old laptop, then this combination is almost guaranteed to cause some issues. An old computer is not likely to have the power we need. You may find you are unable to run smooth animations, transitions and especially video. Your hardware may not be up to the job. Number five, not saving your final show for the future. When watching their final show, some users decide they'll never need to return to their completed show. They assume all the work's done because they're happy with things at this present time. They're wrong most of the time. We'll almost certainly want to return at some stage to the show we've just completed. Maybe after a week or two, when we start to see small errors in the show that we want to put right or we just have some new creative ideas on how to improve the presentation. Here's the foolproof way to step around this pitfall. We need to go to File and choose Backup in Zip. What PTE AV Studio does with this command is to take just the content you actually used in your slideshow. It takes your settings to and your project file and it wraps them all together in one zipped folder. This folder will contain everything you need to reopen and recreate your project. It doesn't include any videos or images that you moved into the project folder but didn't use in the final presentation. A backup in zip is also a perfect solution for those who start a project on one computer but later want to continue working on it on another. 
A zipped folder doesn't require any special software to create or open it, either on Windows or on Mac computers. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, can I encourage you to subscribe to my channel? And if you hit that notification bell, you'll be informed whenever I put up new content. I'll see you next time.